Update. Fiancé 35 male compared my 28th female antidepressants to cocaine and wants me off them. Original story. I have the loveliest, most charming, and attentive fiancé. We had a whirlwind romance for nine months, in which she proposed over a quarantine. He is everything I wanted a partner, and I love him deeply. But the last three months were rough for me. I had a car accident, started a small business, and had a family member pass away. My fiancé and I weren't getting along because I was stressed. Crying, it had to enter serious therapy to deal with the effects of the accident. I was unhealthily dependent on my fiancé and would call him nightly just sobbing my eyes out. I started taking a low-dose antidepressant. Finally, I'm not fixated on the accident. I'm happy and go lucky. I'm back swimming again, my favorite activity, calling friends, and my business is doing well. I admit to have less time for my fiancé. I'm much less needy. Sometimes I can't get to my phone in time and miss his calls, when before I couldn't leave my room and needed to be connected 24-7. My fiancé sat me down and expressed his concerns. He told me he loves me but has noticed a change in personality. He said I spoke with a few doctors and antidepressants can even be compared to coke, and that I could be doing lasting damage to myself. He said, I can support you through all the pain and the messiness. I love you and I want you in my life forever. He said I should call my doctor and request to come off. I kind of balked, and he didn't take it well. He requested that I at least respond to his messages in a reasonable time, that he knows me well. This new personality isn't a real me, and I'm moving too much. I'm kind of concerned with other behavior for my fiancé. He wants me to wear baggier clothes to the gym, and wants to be involved in every decision I make. When it comes to meeting new clients, he wants to know who they are. Otherwise, he says it seems shady. I have a possible contract that would take me out of town. But he expressed concern, telling me I need to stay close to family. I love him. But every conversation turns into him telling me that I have to work harder so he can trust me. Besides counseling, what else can I do? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Do not come off medication. Do not give him access to your medication because he will tamper with it. I'm not joking. He is lying about speaking to a few psychiatrists and antidepressants being like coke. He wants you off them, so that you are dependent on him again. This man wants to control you. That's what he's interested in. Why wouldn't he be happy that you're doing so well? Your whirlwind romance started with love bombing, but now he's panicking because you're happy and less dependent on him. Keep an eye on your medication at all times. He does not love you. He wants to control over you. I was a sobbing mess off of my medication. It wasn't stable. He's been testing me lately, and I'm not as reactive. I just don't understand why someone would want that. It doesn't make for a healthy relationship. It doesn't make for a healthy relationship. He doesn't want a healthy relationship. He started with love bombing and now it's on to control. This is also textbook mistreatment early warning signs. You might as well be writing a horror movie script. Red flags of coercive control here. He likes you dependent on him. I'm positive he did not find a few doctors who said antidepressants are like coke and can lead to brain damage. The statement would be laughable if he wasn't so obviously trying to control you. Lovely, charming, and attentive is how these types usually start out. It's called love bombing. Start being strong and independent, refusing to play his games, and see how long that lasts. Though proceed carefully because I've seen this turn ugly. There's actually a name for that tactic that some partners like this use to control the other partner's mental health, including their mental health medication. It's called mental health coercion. The National DV Hotline did a national survey on it a couple years ago, and many callers reported various forms of it. Partners hiding their medications, demanding they not use medication, impeding their access to therapy, gaslighting them, telling them they deserve to be mistreated because they had depression or anxiety, etc. Substance use coercion is similar. It is also a type of domestic mistreatment. Are you serious? I'm at a loss for words. My fiancé isn't at that point that he's hiding medication, but he told me he is extremely concerned and would advise me even if he was just my friend. He believes I need to face my problems and that he can help me work through them as if he could be my coach. It's a very weird situation where he likes me being his little project, but the truth is I'm doing a lot better. I have healed and grown. I guess it is a way to be controlling. Now for the first update. Many of you commented, advising me that this was an emotionally abusive relationship. I admit I am naive, 
I didn't want to believe that was the truth. I spent some time with my fiancé on the weekend, and he continued with his pep talk about the antidepressants. He said I should taper them off to 5 milligrams, and gave me a timeline for doing it. I had only been agreeing with him so we didn't have to argue, but secretly I continued with them on my own. After this weekend, we had a wonderful time. He tells me he has hope for our future, that he supports me going through the pain, etc, etc. On Monday, we were talking and I brought up a pretty big issue in our relationship. I won't go into specifics. He's at fault, though. That isn't solved. My fiancé went ballistic. For the first time, he screamed at the top of his lungs with his face distorted and spit flying everywhere. He told me I didn't have a brain big enough to change and that all I do is sit there and smile with my freaking medication and that I'm a pitiful, almost 30-year-old woman who is pathetic and if I want to see real trauma, he could show me. He said, you're an evil person who is deliberately hurting the only person who loves you and how dare you bring up these issues when you know I'm stressed. Because I was stoic, he became even more enraged until I had to pretend to cry. Yes, I had to pretend to cry because that's the only way he would calm down. I do feel guilty because he's stressed. He said, if you believe I've overreacted, delete me. But if you want to listen with your heart and put everything on the line and be a ride or die team, I'll come to your place tomorrow. Suddenly he told me something has come up, let's talk in a week. And he has completely disappeared slash gone offline. Because he was screaming at me in front of family members, I think he may be committed to a psych ward? I don't know. I finally found the courage to just block him completely. It hurts like hell, but it's the only way. Now for more comments before the final update months later. Holy cow. You need to keep him blocked and do not get back into this relationship. It's only a matter of time before this becomes physical. I doubt that alone would get him committed to a psych ward. It's more likely he's on a bender or something. Him threatening Opie with showing her real trauma means that time was sooner rather than later. Opie, just know that the only person in your life that has a say in your medication is your doctor slash medical professional. Your, hopefully, ex-fiancé is not a trained professional and therefore had no say in the matter. I do feel guilty because he's stressed. Uh, don't feel guilty about anything in what you did or wrote. Plus, the controlling nature attitude towards your medication tells me you made a correct choice in blocking him. I'm terrified for Opie. If this situation escalates any further, she is going to end up hospitalized or worse. Please stay safe and keep the psychopath out of your life, Opie. I am beyond brainwashed. He calls me every day for 40 minutes to one hour to tell me everything what's wrong with me and needs to be changed. Over time, I've started to believe it. I've lost myself. I have to tell you, it is very unusual to conclude that because someone shouted, they have been committed to a psych ward. That is just a really dramatic notion. Why didn't the family members present intervene when he was screaming and spitting on you? It is not because of the screaming. It's because of his unusual slash manic behavior that's become increasingly worse the four weeks. He is hearing and seeing things that aren't happening. He was telling me I was evil and that I had to wake up. There are many other things I didn't include in this. Sounds like bipolar psychosis, which is no joke. How absolutely ironic that he'd be screaming about you being evil and stupid for treating depression while he's having a breakdown. You deserve to be in a healthy relationship with someone empathetic. It's not it. Let me tell you, it is absolute hell. Now for the second update months later. I wanted to take the time to thank all of the lovely commenters. It was hard to hear and understand at the time, but you really helped me see how messed up that situation was. Thank you for all the resources which I had to read over and over in order to try to understand. My ex-fiancé and I are no longer together, and we have zero contact. We had a terrible breakup, in which he threatened to traumatize me. I spiraled into a pretty bad depression and continued with serious therapy. I took a two-month trip abroad and entered a healing retreat that was out of cell service. I basically spent seven weeks crying, vomiting, and healing in the jungle. The good news is that my anxiety has lessened, to the point that I no longer take any kind of medication. I lost 20 pounds. I bought a new apartment, started a new job, and, slowly, started dating someone new. I made a lot of new friends, but I'm actually allowed to see them now. My new guy is about 100 times better and has never tried to control me in any way. I have bumped into my ex-fiancé four times, and honestly, I kind of recoil at the sight of him. I have no idea how he was able to control my life so much at one point. That was a really dark place. It will take me a long, long time before I love anyone again, 
but that's okay. I'm giving myself a lot of time and space. Things aren't perfect, and I'm still processing. But things turned out much better than I hoped for. So thanks again. Sometimes the best medication is removing toxic people from your life. I'm so glad you got out of that situation. Remember that your mental and physical health are always priority number one, and I hope you have a good recovery in life. Thank goodness. I remember how scared I was reading your original post. Happy you've pulled yourself out of this. Thank you for the kind words. The thread validated me so much, and I am in a much better place. Now for the last story. Update. Boyfriend 28 wants me, 26 female, to turn down huge promotion. Original story. My boyfriend and I have been together about 18 months and moved in a month ago. Everything in our relationship is great, and we have discussed getting engaged in about two years. We both want to wait that long. I haven't been thrilled at my company lately, but I just got a promotion offered to be unexpectedly. It would be about a 35% raise and better job title, but it would involve regular traveling, at least a few days a week. This would be great for my career, but my boyfriend does not want me to take it. He says he's done a long-distance relationship before, and it sucked, and he has no interest in doing that again. This would be long-distance, but about half the time I would be gone. He didn't go as far as to say he'd break up with me, but he said something to the effect of, I love you, but I wouldn't stay in a situation that made me less happy. I am pretty stunned. I don't really know how to react to all this. He's never been anything but supportive of me in the past, and we've never even had a fight. He wants me to look for jobs elsewhere that don't require the traveling. It would be hard to get one that would pay this much with a job title being offered at my age. I'm not sure how I feel about all this. The promotion would bring me from a little over 80,000 to 105,000. He makes 110,000. He thinks I could get similar slash same pay at a different company without constant travel. He also thinks it'd be unfair to put all the pet care on him. Now for the top advice before reading the update. I am pretty stunned and don't really know how to react to all this. He's never been anything but supportive of me in the past, and we've never even had a fight. He shared a boundary. He communicated it in a very healthy way. The positive here is your partner has made his expectations clear and classified his needs. What you decide to do now is your decision. The appropriate response is to respect his boundary by not pleading or guilt-tripping him into being okay with you taking the promotion. I'm glad to see all the top comments are just dump his butt. He expressed his feelings and thoughts based on past experiences in a reasonable way. And while he didn't use breakup as threat to get what he wants, he's not a doormat and didn't promise he could stick around. All couched in concern for his girlfriend. First question. When a company that you're not happy working at offers you a promotion with a better pay and title, should you accept it? Second. I think your boyfriend has a clear expectation slash boundary. If you guys can't find middle ground in this, it's going to be tough being together. That's part of his argument. I haven't been happy at my company for a while. He thinks getting in deeper by accepting the promotion would just be more stress and it wouldn't be worth the extra salary, but would only harm our relationship. I can't decide if this is just him expressing a boundary and fair or overstepping. Just to be clear, I'm reading you say that you're getting a promotion at a job you don't like and it will cause friction in your relationship? I understand where your boyfriend is coming from, and it is a good thing that he's communicating his boundaries. Being apart for days at a time is bound to put stress on the relationship regardless, so this is something you need to thoroughly consider. Do you think frequent travel is worth the raise? Do you think your boyfriend is being unreasonable with his boundaries? Is the relationship something you want to pursue further? Honestly, this is more up to personal judgment than anything else. The best advice I can give is to talk with your partner. He doesn't seem like he's unwilling to let you work at all. I'm reading that he just doesn't want to be apart frequently. Oh, he is absolutely not trying to stop me from working. He said many times he loves that I have a good career. So does he. And now for the update. Long story short, I declined a promotion. I wanted to work after my conversations with my boyfriend and I had a talk with my current boss. I asked more about the role and why it was available. Basically, the last two people have quit due to distress. And honestly, the more I learned about it, the less interested in it I was. They gave me until yesterday to decide. But after going home to my boyfriend to the house we just moved into together and hanging with my pets, I just realized things are going so good for my personal life right now. And adding a super stressful job that would harm the best relationship I ever had would be a mistake. 
Also, it really wouldn't be fair to put all the pet care on him. When I got the dog as my own and we agreed to get the cat together. Then my mom said that when my dad had a job like that, they almost broke up. Before they were married. I've always looked at their relationship like the gold standard. So to hear that was shocking. I also asked my friend with a similar work schedule. And she said she's looking for new jobs because despite making good money, she can never actually enjoy it since she's always on the road. She and her boyfriend at the time she started that job broke up. And she said the job had a lot to do with that. I don't want that for me. I know a lot of people say I shouldn't make decision around a boyfriend, but I truly believe that he will be my husband and father of my kids one day, so I'm happy to have made this decision. I am starting to look for a new job, and I'm glad my boyfriend encouraged me to not get in deeper with my company, because I'm realizing that the only toxic relationship I have is with my employer, and the one I have with him is quite healthy. I appreciate the advice I received on my last post. The last two people have quit due to distress. Even without your boyfriend, this would be enough for me to not take the job. In general, I agree not making career decisions for a relationship that is still fairly young, but it sounds like this is probably would have been a nightmare anyway. If you're good at your job, there will likely be other opportunities for advancement. Yeah, my roommate's sister was offered a really good job. Six-figure salary plus other benefits. But once she joined, she heard that many prior to her left the job pretty early on. After a few days, the boss started making unwanted advances. Since it's an outsourcing company, HR complaints need to be made to a different country's branch. The complaint she made didn't go far. So she just left the job. There's apparently zero retention for that position. Okay, this is a better reason than just boyfriend. If you were about your work-life balance, that is valid. I've got jobs over that. It's definitely the biggest reason, but yes, the others matter as well. Sweetheart, you might not read this, but I always give this advice to most people. Don't live to work, work so you can live. Do not make your job your life. Work enough so you can support your life. Your job should be just that, something you have to do. A job, not your life. I disagree. Find something you love and do it well. That is how you find true balance. Living your career as a separate part of yourself when you spend so much of your day and week devoted to it is a recipe to never have balance. Most people don't love to work. If you do, congrats. But most people do what they can to not live a crappy life. Sacrificing money for happiness is a very hard choice, but usually the right choice. 